cannot successfully complete phasia and you choose not to do the graduate diploma is to sell your practice. And hence the reason why we've invited uh, Chris Martin with us today. Chris is a practitioner here in Brisbane. He's been um, managing his business, uh, KDM Financial and Estate Planning and MT Wealth uh, for 18 years. And Chris has uh, established a very, very successful practice. And he has done that um, not only through hard work, but also through the acquisition of other practices, other businesses. And made um, some advice for practitioners who have decided to sell or will be forced to sell. They've basically got a 12 month window. Um, and you mentioned some multiples before of, you know, perhaps two to 2.5, but let's say someone's business could be sold at two times right now, yeah. but they're going to sell in 12 months time. What could they do over the 12 month period to increase that multiple from two to either 2.2 or 2.5? Is there, is there anything that they could do to get it, to make it more sale ready? A lot of it would come down to the advice to themselves. If they're wanting to even stay on within the practice as potentially say a BDM or, or, or something like that, and, and they're more than happy and have the capability to give us the time and, and what we need in order to do that handover over the next 12 months, that's always going to look a lot more attractive on, on that multiple. If it's so, look, my concern potentially with, with some advisors is that they're, they're going to want to, the closer and closer we get to that date where they can no longer technically advise, is that they're just going to want to, you know, hand over the clients and then depending on, on who they are and their age and things like that, they're going to want to go start a new career and, and go do something different. So that's certainly something that, that I'm keeping in the back of my mind that, that I'm going, well, okay, then what is that new career going to be? Is, is that new option or new career going to be something that I can, um, that, that you can still then give me the time that I need and that your clients need in order to do the handover? Um, so I, it, it, it's, it, it's an interesting question or it, it's a bit of a difficult one because it can vary so much between practice to practice. Um, and, and look, I suppose the only other one is really, especially if we're talking ongoing advice fee, is making sure that that's really nice and cleaned up. So making sure that their opt-in processes are, are, are down pat, their tracking of opt-in is, is down pat, the amount that they're actually invoicing a client. Um, we always look at it that you're always going to have a few clients who, um, unfortunately, the, the reality is, is that they're being undercharged and that you, you can't take that client on. Um, and let's say, for example, if it's a group of 15 clients um, and they might be getting charged on average five, six hundred dollars per client, so they might be six or seven grand total for those 15 clients. The, the reality is, is that we then usually sit down with those 15, we explain the situation and you might have, say, two or three that are willing to go on, the, the, I suppose, more or at least the, the um, billing cycle that you can actually cover the cost. Um, and usually those two or three will be the same revenue as what those whole 15 were anyway. Um, so that'd be the only other thing, just trying to clean up a few of those things. Um, and another potential one could be that, um, especially if your clients are in that older, you know, 70 plus um, age bracket, what engagement have you made with their kids? Um, and, and what steps are you doing in order to make sure that you're, you're ready for that uh, generational wealth change? Thank you.